Hi folks and welcome back to the Jet Fuel Only channel. I'm Daniel and today we're covering brake bleeding and brake fluid exchange. Up next. So most of you know that I do autocross my car a lot, but I'm excited for this weekend because this Saturday I'm going up to Thunder Hill in California to do my first ever full road course track day. I've even got an instructor lined up. Now I've done the V Performance Lab out near Vegas, and that was back in 2010 with the second generation Vs. I'm not sure if it's quite the course that they offer today, so I'm really excited about this weekend and getting a lot of track time. One of the most important things about going to the track is that you want your brakes in tip top shape. It's one of your top safety features of your car. And one of the most important parts of the brakes is the fluid. The fluid, if it's old, is not gonna hold up to the track where you are demanding a lot from your brakes. Let me do a quick review with you of how the brake system works and why it's important to change out that fluid. When you step on the brake pedal, it's pressurizing that brake fluid, which is a hydraulic fluid, in the lines to help push the pads together to squeeze the rotor and then get your car stopped. And as you might have remembered from high school physics class, fluids don't compress. So once that uh, fluid is pressurized, it's like a steel piston basically shoving those pads together. But over time, brake fluid accumulates moisture. And moisture is bad because water boils at like, what, 220 degrees, remember? So once the brake fluid boils, then there's gases in the fluid and gases compress unlike hydraulic fluid. Brake fluid's designed to boil at much higher temperatures too. So generally in your normal driving, it's never gonna boil. In track situations, it's possible that you could overheat it and cause it to boil with high pressure. Because again, high school physics, remember that as you increase the pressure on a fluid, the temperature rises. So you could increase the pressure enough the temperature rises to the boiling point. And the more moisture that's in your fluid, the sooner it's gonna boil, and the sooner you're gonna have spongy gases in the fluid, which is gonna cause a spongy pedal and not enough brake force. So it's really important to change out that fluid. Now, you can test your fluid with a simple tester, like maybe these found on Amazon, but I was recently at a shop and they checked mine and they said it had over 4% moisture content, which is definitely an indication it's time to change out that fluid. Plus, it's been a while and I've been autocrossing a lot, so I know I'm hard on the fluid. Now my manual says to change the fluid every three years or 45,000 miles, and your car may be different, but man, I wouldn't go more than two years uh, with my brake fluid, and guess what? It's only been about 15 months or 15,000 miles since I had new brake fluid put in, and it's already bad. So be sure to get your brake fluid checked out, and if you're doing a track day, you need to change the fluid. Now, thanks to John, one of my autocross mentors, he suggested this fluid for track days, and upon further research, I found that it's a pretty common fluid to use for people to go to the track, or a fluid very similar. Uh, this fluid is gonna work better for you on the track, but it's still usable in your daily driver. Now, I've done a few brake fluid exchanges and bleedings in my life, uh, but I've always done it the old-fashioned way with the help of a second person, but today, I'm all alone, and I wanted to be sure I could get it done easily, so I picked up one of these cheap and easy tools from Harbor Freight. It uses my air compressor compressor to help suck the old fluid out of the car. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're not going to drain and refill the brake fluid. You don't do that with brake systems. We exchange out. It's important not to let any air get into the system. So what we do is we keep a bottle of new brake fluid flowing into the brake fluid reservoir as we drain out the old stuff. And eventually you'll be having new brake fluid draining out. And once it's all new fluid and you can see the color difference and there's no bubbles, then yeah, you've definitely cleaned out the old stuff and replaced it with the new stuff. If you do accidentally get air sucked into the brake system, especially like bubbles at the master cylinder and the ABS system, you're gonna have some other problems and you'll need to see another YouTube video about that problem or just go to a mechanic to get it fixed. Uh, and you don't want that to happen, it's a bad thing. So we're gonna do a proper brake fluid exchange. We're gonna show you how that's done. I've always done it the old fashioned way, using a second person to help me, having to press the brake pedal to pump all the brake fluid out. But today, I got this cheap tool from Harbor Freight and it should make it pretty easy for me to do by myself. Now this is just one method of doing it, but what you're gonna see is the general way to bleed the brakes on the CTS or most cars for that matter. You also get to see how it works with a double bleeder system found on like a lot of Brembo brakes. All right, so let's get to the brake fluid exchange and bleeding process and see how it's done. For this installation, you'll need the following tools. I use this power brake bleeding system from Harbor Freight Tools. 
it basically connects to your air compressor and as air flows through the line, it goes over the top of the reservoir bottle, creating a negative pressure and then sucking the fluid through the white line out of your brake caliper and brake system. Now you'll see in this video that I've found that this system does have its flaws. So I would actually recommend getting a system like this. This is a power brake bleeder that connects to the reservoir and it pushes the fluid through the brake system and out your calipers. Other people have had success stories with this system, but it's a little more expensive. To open the bleeder valves, they are different on the front and back. On the back, you'll need a 10 millimeter wrench like this. The closed end is most useful, but if you have a hard time breaking the bleeder loose, I used a socket. And then on the front calipers, the bleeder is a slightly different size, so I used a 7 16th. You may get away with an 11 millimeter, but 7 16th seems to be the right size. The wrench I'm using here is not optimal. You want one more like the middle wrench. You want paper towels and rags and some gloves to protect your hands because brake fluid is not good on the skin and it's not good on paint, so you'll want to be sure to clean it up as soon as you spill any. Of course, you'll need a jack and jack stands and the tools you normally use to remove the wheels from your vehicle. Be sure to check out my other video where I show you how to properly raise your ATS or CTS, as well as another video on removing their wheels. We're going to start the bleeding procedure at the passenger right rear. That's the brake caliper that's the farthest from the brake master cylinder and reservoir. First, you want to inspect the rotor as well as your pad condition and make sure they are up to snuff. Your pad should have at least a few millimeters or more of material available. Mine here has plenty. If you're using the brake bleeding system I have, you'll want to fill up this reservoir feeding bottle. It's got little adapters so that the bottle can sit snugly in the reservoir opening. Now, if you don't have this or you're going to do it the old fashioned way where somebody's stepping on the pedal for you while you open and close the bleeder, you could just pour in the new brake fluid and put the bottle in upside down so it stops filling the reservoir, kind of like the office water jug. As I insert this bottle, I note that my brake fluid is already up to the max line and that's kind of where I want to keep it. You don't want this to drain any lower than that really. It can go a little lower, but you gotta be careful not to let it run dry. Once you have the bottle installed, be sure to turn the valve to allow the fluid to flow into the reservoir. Now back to the brake caliper, you remove the rubber cover on the bleeder, which I've already done, and now I'm attaching my brake bleeding tool to the bleeder. Use your wrench and open the bleeder valve by turning it counterclockwise. If you have a hard time, you may want to get a socket on it first to break it loose and then go at it with a wrench. Now I'm pressing the trigger on the tool and it's sucking the air out of the bottle and it should be drawing brake fluid out of the bleeder. After you've sucked out a few ounces, go and make sure that your reservoir bottle is filling the reservoir properly. You want to make sure that that reservoir stays full. Do this periodically throughout the bleeding process. Now, since this caliper is the farthest from the brake fluid reservoir, it's going to have the most fluid that needs to be pulled out, and it may take a little while. Using my tool, I was sucking out a lot of fluid, but actually more air than fluid, and I was really confused because there should never be that much air in the system. And if there was, my brakes probably wouldn't have been working. So a little research showed me that there is a flaw with this system, and that is that with this bleeder, you can suck in air around the bleeder screw threads, causing air to flow into the line as well. And it gives you kind of a false indication of air in the lines. So I just stopped bleeding and let it naturally flow out like shown here. And I saw that there were no bubbles. It was just solid fluid. I actually also confirmed by pressing on the brake pedal while a camera was on the tube. I saw solid fluid, no air bubbles come out, and I felt convinced that I'd fully bled this caliper. Now once that line is bled, go ahead and close the brake bleeder valve and then remove your bleeding tube. Make sure that valve is fully closed. You don't want any leaks, but don't want to torque it off either. Then put the rubber dust cap back on. Put your wheel back on, and now it's time to move to the driver's rear. It's the second farthest from the brake reservoir. Again, remove the dust cap from the brake bleeder. You might need to crack it open with the socket first if it's a little tight, and then you can attach your brake bleeder system to the bleeder nipple. Activate the bleeder to make sure that the fluid starts to flow, and look for the color change. The old stuff is dark red, and the new stuff is a brighter yellow color. Now, after I was confident that new fluid was flowing, I went again to the brake pedal because of this bleeder's flaw and stepped on the pedal. 
I saw the last couple bubbles go by and then solid fluid. I felt confident that this line was also bled. No bubbles were redrawn back into the caliper either. So now you can get your wheel back on and we're gonna check our brake fluid reservoir again and then go to the passenger front tire. Once you get that wheel off, it's time to inspect the brake again. Look at the rotor. Does it have grooves, hot spots, cracks, any signs of wear? And then look at your pad. These pads are actually kind of old, but they do have a lot of material, so I'm hoping it's gonna work out. You can see this pad here, but the other one's a little harder to see. And if you have this type of brake system, you can look in this section here, and you can see both pads right there through this opening. Now the front brakes on my CTS are Brembo's with two bleeder screws, one on the inside and one on the outside. I'm gonna go ahead and crack loose both of them, but I'll keep them mostly tight and closed until I'm ready to bleed each valve. So the first one is gonna be the inside one. You start with the inner bleed valve. I'll attach my bleeder system and now open the valve with my wrench. This is a 7 16 Then I'll go ahead and start the bleeding process. This one should be a little shorter than the others because of the distance from this caliper to the brake fluid reservoir. The brake fluid reservoir has already been fully emptied too of the old stuff, so really all you gotta do is get everything out of the brake lines that run from the caliper to the reservoir. Again, due to the flaws of this bleeder, I'm gonna go ahead and step on the pedal and watch the fluid flow. The last couple bubbles go out and it's consistent fluid and I'm happy. Now you can close the bleeder valve Make sure it's secure and not gonna leak. This is a good time to check your brake reservoir feeder bottle and make sure it's not empty and the reservoir is still full. Now put your bleeder on the outside bleeder screw and start the bleeding process. Again, this one won't take very long, just a couple minutes because there's not a lot of fluid to bleed out. And then I went to the brake pedal again and double checked to make sure there was no more air in that one. Same as before, now lock down that bleeder screw and make sure it's fully secure and that it's not gonna leak. Next I wanted to see if I could do this with the wheel on. So I turned my wheel and I was able to access both bleeder screws, it just wasn't as convenient. And obviously this won't work if you don't have open wheels like I do. So I take off the bleeder cover on the inside of the caliper, I attach the bleeder system, and I begin the bleeding process on the inner bleed valve. Once that was done, I closed up the bleeder valve, but because of the difficult access, I did end up making a mess and got some brake fluid everywhere, which is really annoying. Next, we move on to the last and outer bleeder of the driver's front wheel. We'll bleed this out, it's pretty quick, and then we'll be done. One more check by pressing the pedal. Again, normally you shouldn't have to do this with other type of brake bleeding systems, but this is the only way I could confirm there was no more air in the system and none at the bleeder valve. It's solid fluid, all new fluid, so I'm happy with this one. Time to close the bleeder screw and put it away. At the reservoir feeder bottle, just turn the valve to stop the flow and then carefully remove the bottle from the reservoir. Make sure that your reservoir fluid is sitting at the max level, not above and not below. If it's above, you'll need to take a syringe or something to get the excess fluid out. If it's below, just add a little fluid. This looks good. Now back at the workbench, let's look at the bleeder system and all that fluid we removed. It looks like quite a bit, so let's see how much there was. I'm gonna pour it back into the empty bottles of brake fluid. It turns out I filled not only one, but one and a half brake fluid bottles. So you can expect to use about a bottle and a half to fill your reservoir on most cars like the Camaro, the CTS, the ATS, and Corvette. So buy at least two bottles, but it's always a good idea to have an extra bottle handy. Lastly, don't forget to take these bottles to your local auto parts store for recycling. All right, that's it for bleeding the brakes and exchanging the brake fluid on my Cadillac CTS. And it's pretty much the same for most cars. And you saw that the Brembo brakes have the two bleeder valves. So do the inside first and then the outside. That's all there is to it.
Now, as you can see, I didn't really like that brake bleeder that I got from Harbor Freight. I mean, it did a good job for me to do by myself, squeeze the handle and it sucked out all the old fluid. That worked, but with all those bubbles, I was kind of concerned at first and I was like, no, there's no way that we can have this many bubbles in the system, otherwise my brakes wouldn't even work. So I just had to modify the procedure, step on my brake pedal to confirm there were no bubbles in the system. In the future, I'd recommend just getting a brake bleeder system like the one shown here. Uh, I've had other people say that they've used those and they work great and they wouldn't have this kind of flaw where it can suck in air around the bleeder threads. Uh, also, one more topic is that is the AVS system. You may have heard that you need to properly bleed the ABS module. The ABS system is an electronic box that has some valves and it modulates the braking to all the wheels when you have to brake really hard. And air could get trapped in there and the only way to get it by all those valves is to actuate the ABS system. Well, some people say, well, you can just take it out, drive it, hit the brakes real hard, activate the ABS system and then bleed your brakes again and that'll work. I don't know, but the proper way is to take it to a dealer where they have the proper tools that electronically activate that uh, ABS module and then you can bleed out all the bubbles. But I've talked to a couple GM mechanics and they say that generally you won't need to do that unless you really suspect there's bubbles there. There's no reason there for bubbles to be there, so uh, just bleed it normally. But if you've messed up something, maybe you've let air go back through the bleeder and all the way up to the ABS module or you've run the reservoir dry or something, uh, then there's a chance and yeah, you might need to do it then. So don't worry about it otherwise, but if you feel you need to, just go to the dealer. All right, that's it for the brake bleeding and brake fluid exchange video. I hope you found it helpful and that you are willing to try it out yourself. If so, be sure to hit the like button. Also subscribe and because I'm going to the track this weekend, you know there's gonna be a video about it. So if you hit the bell, you'll be notified of when that video comes out. Thanks so much for watching the Jeff Fuel Only channel. We'll see you next time. All right, we've exchanged the fluid and burl it. <laughs> now I wasn't real happy with how that brake now, I wasn't real happy how that Blake, Blake bleeder, Blake bleeder, okay.